in my last job, I felt being used from my boss, exploited, to be honest. It just came to me that it's the same feeling with my parents, because yes. it's not my boss. Okay, the boss exploits me, but I have the choice. Stay or go. Yes. I choose to, to leave. Yeah. But... You can see, though, can't you, the relationship between what your boss was projecting at you and what your parents project at you. Exploitation of me. Yeah. Uh, my boss in the physical level to work hard so he can eat and have pleasures. Yeah. My parents to avoid being triggered and feeling great. It's the same, feeling great. Yeah, exactly. So, my... so can you see the boss that you attract is even about the parents you have that you haven't released emotionally. Yeah. So the, the feeling you have towards your parents needs to be released emotionally and then you won't attract the same boss. In fact, what you'll do is very different things. Now, can I give you a few illustrations of this of people who have done these things? My son Tristan is 28 years old, right? He, uh, he was about, about two years ago, he, um, he had no job and he hadn't been to university. He failed his last two years at high school. So, so he, he failed two years of high school when he was at high school. And he was now 26 years old and the only place that he had ever worked was at a supermarket or, um, or working as a labourer. They are the only two places he'd ever worked. Tristan had not engaged his desires. He didn't know what he wanted to do. He worked out what he wanted to do, and he's always really known what he wanted to do. He just felt he couldn't do it. But he worked out that what he wanted to do was work with children, and in particular, teenage or young teenage children who were disturbed, troubled. troubled. And so, so what Tristan did was he began to engage his desire. What he did was he volunteered to work at a place in the local community. There were no jobs in the local community for, the, for, for him because he needed to have a qualification before anybody would hire him. So nobody would hire him. So, so what he did was he decided to work voluntary doing the job. So he volunteered his time 30 hours every week. And he loved it. And he loved it. He loved just volunteering his time. So he loved it so much that after four months of volunteering his time, so now we're talking up to recently, after four months of volunteering his time for that amount of time, 30 hours every week, which is a solid amount of time, he demonstrated his passion to the people he was working with. And they decided to create two positions, two jobs, and Tristan could have his choice of any one of them even though he had no qualifications. The only thing they asked of him was that he did one, one uh, module unit, yeah. or unit of a course that would eventually give him a qualification. Mm -hmm. And all he has to do is one module, a few hours a week of a course, and he can do that for the next 10 years and he'll have the job. <laughs> That's all he has to do. That because of his passion, and, and now like he goes to work more often than they want him to go to work because he still loves, <laughs> he still loves doing it, right? He loves doing what he's doing. And to him it's not even a job. Like now somebody's paying him to do something that he was voluntarily doing before. Does that make sense? Yeah. Just because he firstly chose to deal with the emotions inside of him that caused him to not actually do it voluntarily. So there was emotions he had to work through as to why he wasn't volunteering, doing something that was his passion. He just, because he wanted it to come to him before he created, yes? But what he did instead was he desired to create. He went ahead and did what he desired, even though he didn't get paid. And eventually he did it so well because he was the only person who doing it with passion <laughs> that a job was created for him. And that's what can happen to every person. And now he's doing exactly what he wants, exactly the job he loves. 
he loves going to work every day. You don't have to set an alarm clock for Tristan in the morning <laughs> to go to work. He loves going to work every day. He's ready to go to work. He often stays late. He often does some on the weekends as well because he loves doing it. He loves working with, with the kids that are involved and he enjoys it in, immensely. Now, so two years later, after he went through all these different emotions and he had to go through all these feelings about why things weren't coming to him, he went through this real powerless stage where he felt like he had no power to create anything. He went through this place where he attacked himself because he didn't have a qualification and he felt he was stupid because he didn't have qualification and he felt all through that. And after he dealt with all those feelings, he embraced a process which created like of volunteering his time and that created a job that now he's in enjoying immensely. Does that make sense? But he had to go through the process. Yep. How did he come to start the process? Um, we, myself and my sons, talk quite frequently about the soul and what it creates. So quite a, a few years ago, uh, it would be now probably four years ago, I started talking to Tristan about, because he wanted to talk about it and not before then, I started talking to him about what he was creating in his life and why. And he could see that it was to do with things that were going on inside of himself that he was creating these things. And so he started to address the emotions as to why he was creating these things from his emotional perspective. And once he started doing that, things started to change. Before then, he was living at home, still with me. Um, he was expecting me to, to provide. provide everything for him. Um, and one of the things I did at that time was I said, no, you have to move out. Right? So, so he was confronted with the emotions he felt towards me about why he was still there, why he was still living there. So he had a lot of confronting emotions to work his way through, but then he got to a stage where he recognised, if I follow my desire with passion and I don't care about the money and I don't care about what's going to come, that, that something's going to happen. And sure enough, within a few months, he did that. Now, during the time when he was following his desire and volunteering his time, all sorts of things happened. One time he got beaten up by, one of the, by, by a boyfriend of one of the students he was looking after. Like, he got uh, punched and, uh, and, he, and he had to charge the guy with assault and all sorts of things happened. But he still went through the emotions of it all. Does that make sense? Totally. Yeah. And once he went through the emotions of it all, now, once you deal with more and more, you start it, your soul starts becoming so powerful that you just attract what you want without effort. Right? So he didn't have to go looking for a job in a different town. He didn't have to go somewhere. He just decided that was where he wanted to live and this was the job he wanted to do. And so he voluntarily did it and eventually it got created. So he was standing on the crossroads, but you actually gave him the little push which road to go down and then it all... I didn't give him a push as to which road to go Apart down. Apart from suggesting I just told home. him that he couldn't come down this road anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make sense? He could go down any other, <laughs> not this one anymore. But, but also, uh, AJ was very, um, as he is with his sons, he, he took a lot of responsibility for the error that he'd created in Tristan. He said, mm. I've been supporting you for all these years. This and that's is not my loving. Error. I've done something bad for you son yeah. <laughs> so we're going to have to I'm going to have to stop this because it's not loving and it's going to bring up emotions for you and Tris would tell you he got angry for a while he was like of course he thought he should get it he'd been given it all his life and then he felt like no this doesn't feel good dad and I you know and he had to be he had to be really humble to those like emotions he felt them and he got angry and, and I, I had to risk he... my son not loving me yeah yeah and yeah, I had to risk that he didn't love me for a while. Yeah, and, and if, if, and if I invested, love him, I will yeah. do that. Yeah. But if he, if he was invested with Tristan, still thinking he's a great dad the whole time, it wouldn't have worked. Yeah, yeah. does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So so um, yeah, I didn't try to push my son in any direction. All I just said is I am no longer going to support him doing what he's doing. 
I mean, financially. He had to create his own desire. Through his own desire, he had to address the issue. I'm perfectly happy with Tristan being a garbage collector or a social worker, as he currently is, or any other person he desires to be. He will always have my love. But I am not happy if he's going to rely on me the rest of his life to have happiness, because in the end he won't be happy doing that, and he also won't be proud of himself doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Many times we do things in our own lives that we're not proud of, eh? and, then, um, and then we expect to be happy with ourselves after doing something we're not proud of, and we can't be. <laughs> we have to change what we do if we wish to be proud of ourselves and have a sense of our, ourselves and a sense of our will. Mm.